Hello there, many thanks for joining us on The Breakfast Show this morning. It's now time to bring you the feature on the show today as we focus on the spike in food prices. Now, while energy prices are an ongoing risk to global inflation in countries around the world, several emerging markets and countries face a different problem. The pace of food price inflation is rendering the currencies vulnerable. Russia's invasion of Ukraine means the food inflation that has been plaguing global current consumers is now tipping into a full-blown crisis, potentially outstripping even the pandemic's blow and pushing millions more into hunger. Commodity markets are soaring, wheat is up about 50% in two weeks and corn just touched a decade high. The surging cost could also end up waning currencies in emerging markets where food represents a bigger share of consumer price baskets. And analysts are predicting export flows will also continue to be disrupted for months to come, even if the war were to end tomorrow. Now, the current uh, fuel crisis here in Nigeria, which has also persisted for uh, a couple of weeks now, is also taking a heavy toll on the local food price here in the country across the cities. So far, the agriculture sector has taken a major hit with prices of foodstuff on a steady rise and the lamentation triggered by this situation are unprecedented. Now, so far today, uh, the price of a basket of tomatoes, which started to crash before the fuel crisis, is now on the rise again. We are looking at from between 14 and 16,000 to rising well above 19,000 naira and even over the 20,000 naira benchmark. A bag of pepper, which also sold for 18,000 naira, is selling much more. Joining me on our breakfast show this morning, live in our Lagos studio, to discuss this and more, I have agribusiness expert Chris Ugo. Thank you very much for joining us uh, on the breakfast show this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Now, food crisis here, the inflation we have at this point in time now in terms of food security, has a global picture and then the local picture. The uh, Russia-Ukraine tension is having its own uh, escalations here and there, looking at wheat, looking at corn, sugar. These prices are also rising high. And here in Nigeria, we also have to deal with our local commodities also surging so high. Now, as a player within the spectrum of vegetables, tomato, pepper, and other vegetables, how has it, how has it been really within this space of about three weeks and more since the lingering fuel crisis? Um, thank you very much for this question. Uh, one of the problems we have here in Nigeria is food, and we don't have food sufficient. Most of the people that see the rise in uh, food commodity now is because people from outside the world, foreigners are coming to buy directly from farmers. Mm making it push more shortage to we Nigerians. So the government have to look at it. Um, let's have a law guiding the farmers not to sell directly to these foreigners. If not, we won't have any food mm. in our table tomorrow. Mm. So people use opportunity happening outside this country to buy directly here and sell outside where they will make more money. Because if you have buying maize here, and you're selling it outside this country, you make more than times three to times mm. four of the value. Mm. So that's why we're having the food shortage and the, the price of food hike now. And in terms of the transportation hitches we also have in now, drivers need fuel to transport these uh, produce, these commodities, because we largely still rely on road transportation. Uh, we yet to fully incorporate rail as a major means of transport or even water transport. How do you think this is also taking a major toll, adding to the prices that average Nigerians have to pay for all these commodities? Yeah, the price of diesel now is almost uh, 450 naira per litre here in Lagos. In Kano and Kaduna, it's selling about 500 and plus. So the, the cost of transportation from the north to west or any part of Nigeria where the food comes from have also doubled. And we're going to see the major food crisis coming up in the next few months to come because even the parts to use to repair these vehicles, they are not coming in as usual. Mm. So trucks are breaking down, the cost of fuel is going up. Farmers are abandoning their farm Due to because insecurity. of insecurity. So we, uh, the last time I came here, I said, government have to start doing something now. 
And it seems as if they are not doing enough because if you look at what is happening in our society today, it's going to get worse. Mm. We need to start doing something now. The government, everybody needs to start doing something now. If, do you think we can likely have any change when it comes to uh, cost-cutting measures in terms of transportation, in terms of the quality of the produce that we have, the quantity of produce that we have, learning from research? Do you think we can have any of these uh, bear any fruits for this year? And looking at a rainfall pattern as well, how do you see things playing out for the year 2022 and how this would also likely bring down the price of food or spike? Let the government give us an enabling environment. Um, when I say enabling environment, I mean let the Boko Haram and all these insurgents should stop. Let there be an investment in agriculture. Well, that's not a quick fix. What can we change right now in 2022? Enable environment. That is just the key. Mm. For now, we just have... Because most of the food we eat is just three months, four months. Corn is three months. Rice is three months. Tomato is four months. So, if we have an enabling environment and there's equip fees f by providing tractors, money to farmers. This thing can be solved even within this year. I've been told we're, we have to wrap up now, but in just 30 seconds, looking at the interventions of the CBN and other state governments as well, you look at Lagos as a model city. How do you see things also taking shape in terms of making agriculture the mainstay, creating new food hubs quickly? Yeah, uh, I also talk about food hubs. We need food hubs, especially mm. In Lagos, mm. we need to start, the, the government needs to start buying directly from farmers so that we can have a storehouse. If anything happens to Nigeria today, in two days' time, there won't be food in, in the whole city. So the government also needs to look at okay. having food hubs. Every state needs to have its own food hub. Thank you so much for your time on The Breakfast Show this morning, Chris Ugo. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. We'll definitely have this conversation one more time. Thank you very then much. Maybe a month after and then see whether or not we'll see all the increases in the prices of tomatoes and a whole lot more come down. We'll just keep our fingers crossed to see how things play out. Thank let's, you once let's again. Let's hope so. Thank you very much.